All right guys, so we've seen some great progress in the garden and the raised beds over the last week. You can see these Brussels sprouts that I've, that I've transplanted have come along well. There's some extra growth in them. They did get attacked by a few snails and slugs, but not too bad. A sheep, uh, it looks to be a sheep, and the, and the lambs that got into the field the other day got to a few of them, but again, it's not a big problem. we since fixed the field. They did get my maple tree along with the, the sage plant as well that I just transplanted, but it's not a huge deal because there's still quite a bit of growth on them and I think they'll recover quite well. So again, not a big problem. I, this perspex sheet that I had, I've just moved it back over uh, these herbs, uh, some lettuce, uh, mint, and a few different ones I've forgotten which I've planted now. But you can see they germinated very fast, uh, maybe within just uh, within a week, and we got some growth, good growth above the soil there. So that's good, they're all looking good. I did have them over the peas here, and the peas germinated fast, we got good growth in them. So that's that's a good that's something to look forward to as well to, to get good growth on them. We have had a, a bit of rainfall over the last few days which isn't a deal breaker, it, it's watered the plants lovely and we're going to see some good great growth on um, all these plants uh, in the next few days. Along, uh, Since I moved back the perspex back I've just now watered um, the peas that didn't get, get watered well with the rainfall because the perspex was, was blocking them. So again, I will, I'll just move the perspex back and forth every so often, every week or so, just to give them an extra bit of warmth. And any more seeds that I, I sow in between all these, these vegetables that have got a good start on them, it'll just give them an extra bit of heat and for germination, you know, the, the, the soil will heat up well during the day with the sunshine and then you don't risk them getting, getting too cold or the, you know, in, the, in the night when the, the temperature falls. All right, guys. So you can see this is where I planted the seed potatoes, and I, you know, I put some good soil I dug up from the ditch over there. Put that as like a base, and then up on top, I've gone and put some a thin layer of compost. And again, actually underneath, before the soil or in between the soil, I've layered it up, and I've done, and I've gone and put some hay that has dried out a bit from the field, and some rushes as well as like the base. So we'll just see how that goes, and I think it'll just give it a good kind of cycle. And you know that'll all kind of start to uh, decompose, and it'll add, and, and you know, feeding nutrients in, into the soil here. And then right now on top, I'm basically just going to put some some mulch, so some leaves I have here mixed in with some hay and bits of sawdust as well. So this will act as a, a nice mulch. And I've seen some birds. It looks to be birds like digging up this soil a bit, like looking for worms and insects. So what I'm going to do is. Just put a thin layer of this mulch on top and not too heavy as well because you don't want it to turn to slush so quickly and what that should do is it should give it a nice cover and a bit of protection from the birds and any insects as well it kind of stops slugs and things as well as getting getting in there it's not a big deal with raised beds but you still can get them so it's nice to kind of prevent that so we just go and, and sprinkle some of this on and it should act as a nice layer of defense really as well as you're always adding kind of compost to it and putting nutrients into the ground Alright guys, so a few of you have been asking me about the boat restoration project and if I'll be returning to it. Of course I will be and I just I really want to tear into it right now uh, with the, was such great weather we've been getting lately as well. But unfortunately I, I need to source timber, marine quality uh, plywood for the stern and for the bow. So to get to work on the actual stern at the back I need to uh, have proper weather sealed marine plywood that will last uh, and to get to, to repair the hole in the bow as well. So I'm looking to get that, that wood, I'll be ordering that wood as soon as I can. It looks to be now, of course, it's such a difficult situation and at this certain uh, this circumstance it's, it's difficult to, to get anywhere that's open. Uh, and it looks to be within a few days we'll be able to, to order it in, so that's great. And we'll get back into the boat and we'll, I'll be back doing uh, boat restoration videos. So that's great for you guys and for me as well. I'm, I'm really excited to get back to it. And I want to show you guys what progress uh, I'll be making and documenting it as best I can. I, along with, I'll keep doing these gardening videos and I hope it's interesting to, to some of you and if not a lot of you. Um, I hope you get something out of it and as I learn I will, I will share with you guys uh, what I'm learning as well and what, what, what progress I'm making. And uh, it's really fun to be able to do this. So I hope everybody, you know, during this time, I hope everybody is, is being safe and as safe as, as you can be. I hope that it hasn't affected you so much. And I really just hope that everybody is, um, is staying safe in, at this time. So 
again, thank you so much for the support, the continued support on the videos. And as always, guys, stay productive and have fun creating.